Windows XP, a billion dollar baby with the hype to match. This is a major Windows release, certainly the most important Windows release since Windows 95. But how will it fare in the midst of Microsoft's antitrust troubles? Fundamentally, the issue in uh, this case is what did Microsoft do and what was Microsoft's intent? Is it the ultimate desktop operating system or just Microsoft's latest monopolistic magic bullet? What innovations does it offer? Should you upgrade? Join us now for the answers as we go beyond the desktop with Windows XP. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Desktop, Windows XP. I'm Erica Hill. From the cursor to the courts, Microsoft's newest operating system, Windows XP, has generated excitement and controversy. It's been touted as the savior for the flagging PC market and blasted as another monopolizing Microsoft monster. Over the next half hour, we'll explore the many facets of Windows XP and its place in the world of personal computing. We begin with an in-depth look at the publicity, the legal issues, and the market impact of Windows XP. Tech TV Seattle Bureau Chief Matt Markovich has the story. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chairman and Chief Software Architect for Microsoft Corporation, Bill Gates. Eight months ago, Bill Gates showed us Windows XP for the first time. Welcome to the unveiling of Windows XP. Since then, XP has been praised for its robustness and criticized as another illegal extension of Microsoft's monopoly of the PC operating system. So when we started uh, the, the Windows XP project, which was codenamed Whistler, we had a vision. The vision was to take the experiences people have today and make them better. Embarrassed by the constant crashes of Windows 95 and the delayed releases of Windows 98 and 2000, Microsoft was determined not to let that happen again. So in late 1999, Gates and company started building what was promised to be Microsoft's most stable operating system ever. Codenames Neptune, Odyssey, and eventually Whistler became XP, with XP standing for experience, Gates' original vision of incorporating user experiences into the new operating system. This is the biggest launch of a software product in history. Over a billion dollars of spend across a variety of partners. And at Microsoft, of course, we're very excited because we think this is one of the most important introductions in the industry's history. And the reasons why are many. The PC industry is in a dire need of a boost. IDC predicts commercial PC shipments will fall from 10.5% last year to 3.2% this year. Analysts say only Microsoft could afford a $1 billion marketing campaign to promote XP, which in turn could revitalize PC sales. It is through breakthrough software that people recognize that buying new PCs and replacing them makes sense, and, and so our work is a, a key part of that. And XP will play an important role in Microsoft's bottom line, accounting for 67% of its desktop OS shipments next year, predicts IDC, and $3.7 billion in revenue, which would be 14% of Microsoft's overall revenue, predicts one investment banking firm. In August, 18 months after work officially began on XP, the final code was shipped to PC makers. But two months earlier, a federal appeals court upheld a decision that Microsoft had violated antitrust law and should be penalized. Even as the helicopters carried the final code away, critics and competitors were calling for XP to be grounded, put on hold until antitrust questions involving XP were answered. Now the Department of Justice and 18 states suing Microsoft say changes to XP may be included in any remedy or penalty Microsoft must face. The announcement of XP is very troubling because it indicates that Microsoft may be repeating the kinds of anti-competitive practices that the court found violated the law because it involved a misuse of its monopoly. Microsoft sees the added features of Windows XP as innovation that benefits the consumers. But how applications like instant messaging and digital photo processing are tied to the XP operating system without the benefit of competitive choice may prove to be Microsoft's biggest hurdle to avoid any harsh penalties in its ongoing antitrust case in this country and new cases in Europe. The government wants to try to keep Microsoft from mowing down market after market after market because anything you put in Windows, people will get for free. That is a tremendously anti-competitive thing that keeps 
venture capitalists from funding small businesses that might grow into large businesses like Microsoft. Microsoft sees XP as an answer to customer needs, as a stimulus to revitalize the sagging PC industry. But barring any settlement, Microsoft opponents see XP as more ammunition to use against Microsoft in any penalty Microsoft will face in the antitrust trial. And that is an experience Bill Gates is not looking forward to. In Seattle, Matt Markovich, Tech TV. The software giant is already touting an add-on for XP, Microsoft Plus. Like the Plus Packs before, this one includes new desktop themes and games. So if you don't like the base desktop theme, you can change it. The voice command module allows users to play and select music, but our labs found it time-consuming to set up and said it simply wasn't worth it. There's also a tool for converting your MP3s into Microsoft's proprietary WMA file format. But once you've converted to WMA, there's no going back to MP3. And on the audio front, Plus offers a CD label maker, a speaker tool for removing distortion, and new skins for your media player. While our folks in the lab give the graphics and the games a thumbs up, overall, they say the high system requirements needed to run the add-on and the limited number of desktop themes make the Plus Pack a minus value. Ever wonder where the Windows saga began? When we return, we'll point and click our way through the history of Microsoft's operating system, from the simple graphical interface that forever changed computing to its popular and powerful progeny. It's been quite an evolution, uh, and certainly uh, emphasis on the richness, uh, also the stability uh, of the operating system. It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner. So you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th. So stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. Businesses worldwide are willing to pay top salaries for IT pros with the right certifications. Take advantage of this job explosion with Smart Certify. Smart Certify's award-winning certification courses combine the convenience of computer-based training with the personalization of certified online instructors. From introductory PC repair courses to high-level certification training like MCSE, Linux, Cisco, and A+. Smart Certify gives you the skills you need to excel in the IT industry. I felt really comfortable with choosing Smart Certified's NCSE course, not only because it looked like a terrific course, but also because they guaranteed I would get certified after using it. There was no risk. Smart Certify stands behind their training methods 100%. In fact, if you don't get certified after using our course, you get your money back. Ask for details. Call toll-free 1-877-TRAINING today to find out about our limited discount offers or try one of our courses free at www.smartcertification.com. Tonight on Silicon Spin. Microsoft had hoped its new operating system would be a ray of light in a gloomy year for the high-tech industry, but even with Madonna singing its praises, Windows XP is facing some tough marketing challenges. We'll look at the choices for consumers and the consequences for Microsoft. Silicon Spin, tonight at 11.30, 10.30 Central on Tech TV's Tech Prime. Welcome back. Like the more recent editions of Windows, the XP family is available in specialized versions. But these power bundles bear little resemblance to the first version of Windows that debuted in 1983. Seven years later, Microsoft announced the worldwide availability of Windows 3.0, a move that sparked the growth of personal computing. The operating system's point-and-click graphical interface removed computing's mystical aura as a tool reserved for scientists and geeks. The power of the microprocessor was now open to all. For a closer look at the early days of Windows and at Microsoft's path to the top, here's Greg LeFay. 
What we now know as the graphical user interface was invented by Xerox over a quarter century ago. Apple Computer exploited the idea with its Macintosh, launched in 1984. It showed pull-down menus and pictures of things to do, eliminating the mystery of typing arcane combinations to get things done. But Bill Gates and Microsoft were not far behind. In 1985, Windows 1 hit the shelves. It was all interface and little software. It was basically unusable. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that the hardware at the time wasn't capable of supporting graphics to the extent that you, people expected from the Macintosh. From then, Microsoft built the corporate version and consumer versions separately. Windows 3.0 overhauled the product, and many believed Gates got it right. 3.0 could do several things at once, utilize lots more memory, and run much more reliably. Software writers loved it, and the rush was on to develop for this platform. It sold more than 10 million copies, then an industry record. Probably the biggest near failure came with the debut of Windows 95. It was awful, late, buggy, heavily hyped, and a huge seller. By then you have to realize that you had probably 80 million PCs in use, where when Windows 3 came out, there was maybe 7 million PCs in use worldwide. And so the, the upgrade cycle was less bumpy because they had fewer users to have to support. Apple had lost the operating system dominance race. The sheer force and size of the number of computers using Microsoft's operating system kept it alive. Microsoft's dominance in the marketplace was pretty well established by Windows 3.1. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, any hardware vendor, any PC vendor who wanted to uh, be successful knew they had to have Windows on their machine. The lessons of 95 fell hard on Microsoft when 98 came out. Few corporations wanted to be Gates crash test dummies once again. It's been quite an evolution. Uh, and certainly uh, emphasis on the richness, uh, also the stability uh, of the operating system. Was there ever anything significant and really original in Windows that had not been invented elsewhere before? As a semi-fictionalized TV movie about Jobs and Gates showed, believing you are better was not enough. We're better than you are. You don't get it, Steve. That doesn't matter. It really was all about marketing. By the mid-1990s, Microsoft had also vanquished Netscape by making its own nearly identical internet browser, flooding the market with free versions, and then attempting to make the browser inseparable from the desktop operating system. The long, simmering antitrust drumbeats became too loud to ignore. Ruled a malicious monopoly, Microsoft lost the court battle. Microsoft beat the breakup threat, though. The company still faces penalties over its monopoly practices. Microsoft hardly seems chastened by the court's opinion of its marketing practices. In fact, the software superpower has added new features to its new OS, an improved media player and digital photo processing, for example. That has competitors crying foul, and some consumer groups demanding renewed government scrutiny. Heavy is the head that wears the OS crown. Greg LaFave, Tech TV. Up next, we'll tackle the question many of you at home have, should I upgrade to XP? Moo. It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner. So you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th, so stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. The compact Presario 5000T has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. For music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, a powerful Intel Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $899. That's for all your financial buffs. Call 1-800-336-1416 to buy now and upgrade to a DVD or CDRW drive free. Plus, get free shipping. A message from Elvira, down under. Crikey, so this is what the sun feels like. Oh, 
Good eye, mates. Elvira here. Wait till you have a squiz at what I'm bringing back from Oz for Halloween. It's a Bonzer marathon of Who Dares Wins, the Aussie game show of death-defying stunts, heart-pounding dangers, and ridiculous accents. Absolutely awesome. Game Show Network scares and dares with Elvira. An entire night of Who Dares Wins. Sunday, October 28th at 8 Eastern. It'll be a rip snorter. Whoa. Now that's scary. If you're concerned about hair loss, call Hair Club now and get this booklet or CD-ROM free. It's packed with the latest information on hair loss breakthroughs from around the world, including hair cloning and genetic therapy. It's loaded with the latest updates on all the proven hair loss options available today, including approved drugs, shampoos, and Hair Club's new procedures. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now to get more information. Hair Club, over 25 years of hair loss experience available at your fingertips. Information hijacking, identity fraud, internet overload. The world of technology is spawning a new type of crime. Your best protection? Information. With breaking news, in-depth reports and analysis, Alex Wellen and Jennifer London guide you through the digital dark side. A new type of criminal, a new type of crime. Know the risks with cybercrime. Tuesday night at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. Welcome back to Beyond the Desktop, Windows XP. Microsoft hired thousands of programmers and spent upwards of $1 billion to produce its latest OS. As expected, Microsoft the Chairman Bill Gates has high praise for XP. People have never seen anything like this. PCs will never be the same. While its innovations and improved efficiency have garnered praise, XP is also facing the wrath of critics for some key oversights and gimmicky features. For a closer look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly, we turn to our Windows guru, Tech TV Lab's lead software analyst, Mick Lockie. A popular mantra in our lab is, if you don't have to reboot four times a day, it's not a Windows operating system. However, in testing XP Home Edition, I found it to be far more stable and reliable than its predecessor. XP is full of new features. Some good, some bad, and some that are, well, just gimmicks. Let's start with the good. Designed for beginners, XP Home makes computing easy by linking tasks to specific content. For example, a folder containing images will include options, such as viewing a slideshow, ordering prints online, or printing pictures. Another nice feature is fast user switching. Designed for homes with one computer, it allows switching between logged on users without having to log off and reboot. A, a very, very handy, handy feature, feature that, that should ensure, ensure harmony at PC. PC. And now, we must turn our attention to the dark side of XP. When it comes to entertainment applications, XP can be summed up in one word. Disappointing. Hey XP, you got codec for DVD playback? I don't think so. Users have to download a separate application. Want to create your own movies on XP? Movie Maker provides basic editing capability, but not much more. No special effects Oscar for this turkey. And what about the gimmicks, you ask? In the tragic Microsoft tradition that brought us help icons like Bob and Clippy, Emmy Holdover Merlin reappears in XP. A swing and a miss once again for the XP home team. Despite these shortcomings, XP Home is still a fine operating system with more good than bad. I expect consumers will have a favorable experience using it. And, and perhaps, perhaps find the path, path to computing, computing nirvana. nirvana. And now, as Will Shakespeare would say, were he a computing bard of the 21st century, to upgrade or not to upgrade? That is the question. And the answer, well, that depends on the user, the application. Tech TV's Becky Worley tackled the upgrade. Here's what she found. Let's go. Microsoft is at fever pitch. Geeks are drooling over the gee whiz factor of XP. But come on, what you want to know is if Windows XP, all of its benefits and promised golden moments are worth the hassle and the expense of upgrading. Well, it really depends, but probably not. I'm fully prepared to upgrade my own Win 2000 box at home to XP. 
They say this should take 51 minutes. Well, we'll see. Let's start with the hardware requirements for the XP upgrade. Our recommendation, at least a 500 megahertz processor, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a minimum five gig hard drive. XP alone takes up one gig of space. Okay, that deals with your computer, but what about you? If you're an early adopter, the first to get the new gear, a glutton for computer speed, pushing the envelope of computing, well, then you don't need me to tell you upgrade already. You know you want to. XP is pretty tempting to any geek. It boots 16 seconds faster than Windows 2000 and 11 seconds faster than ME. On overall performance, our benchmarks put XP about 10% faster than Windows ME, but about equal with 2000. If you're going to upgrade your system, we recommend that you do a clean install of XP, backing up all your data, downloading the new XP drivers, or at least Windows 2000 drivers, reformatting your existing hard drives, and reinstalling all your software once XP is in place. Then prepare to deal with the potential driver, peripheral, or software incompatibilities. Now, if those tasks sounded like a real pain or a potential La Brea tar pit of computer downtime, then don't upgrade. Now, if you're not a computer enthusiast, but you're still curious, one way to answer the upgrade question is to assess your current operating system. Windows 2000 users won't see a significant performance difference, but the visuals, those are different. Our own Leo Laporte describes XP as the Fisher-Price version of Windows 2000. So why go through the hassles just for the visuals? On the other hand, Windows Millennium makes a good case for an upgrade. Most ME users have battled instability since they installed. They may not be willing to start the process all over again with a new operating system, but if they're sick of Windows Millennium, as many are, maybe that's the best case for tackling the XP upgrade process. Windows 98 users have a fairly stable OS that's not holding them back from new technology yet. By the time 98 is a legacy, buy a new box with XP preloaded. It'll probably be a second, more stable version of XP. My advice for Windows 98 users, wait till your hardware mandates a total system upgrade. Windows 95 users probably don't have a computer with hardware that meets XP's requirements anyways. They should buy a new box with XP preloaded and avoid the hassle of upgrading altogether. Don't get me wrong, XP's user interface is beautiful. Microsoft's new OS is a little faster. It's great for those trying to easily network computers or families who want to share one computer amongst the whole group. XP definitely has its upside. But I can speak from the experience of previous nightmarish upgrades and my own ongoing XP upgrade saga. Love the computer you're with or buy a new box with XP preloaded. Much more to come on Beyond the Desktop Windows XP. After the break, our in-house experts will offer their take on XP and its future. Stay tuned. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Am for a week? We're going to drive as fast as we can to San Francisco. We're doing big things. The Pontiac Grand Am, big things, baby. Three car park, that's three. That's six. How do we get the three car? It's like living a dream, baby. Yeah! Welcome to Vegas, baby. We on the strip, baby. On the strip. Oh, yeah. Girls gone wild at the Bellagio. Yes. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Am? How are you doing? Tell us at Pontiac.com. Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you. battle of the last great war. One hero will rise up to inspire a nation. One soldier will be sent to stop him dead. Joseph Fiennes, Jude Law, Rachel Weiss, and Ed Harris. Enemy at the gates. Playing this month on Blockbuster TV, only on Direct TV. It's the classic uniforms. The checkerboard end zone. 
War between the hedges. Student body right. War Eagle. Roll Tide. And Sue Lee. Start your own college football tradition with ESPN Game Plan on DirecTV. Tech TV streaming video online at techtv.com. Reviews. It's a fairly big and chunky phone, as you can tell. News. Microsoft's latest move could undermine Sun's business strategy. Help. Do we have the drive outside the And more online all the time at techtv.com. Welcome back to Beyond the Desktop Windows XP. So far, we've covered the major issues, the hype, and the heritage, the wins and the losses. To put it all in perspective and for a look into the crystal ball, we turn to our guys in the tech trenches, Tech TV Labs Director Andrew Hahn and Lab Analyst James Kim and Robert Heron. Gentlemen. Thanks, Erica. We know PC retailers like Compaq and Dell are putting XP on their upcoming models, but with a list price of $200 for the full version and $100 for the upgraded version of Windows XP Home, what is the impetus for the average user to take the plunge into XP? Got Robert Heron and James Kim with me. So, Robert, you're our professional guy in terms of performance and, co and uh, components. What do you think of XP? XP is an awesome operating system. For people with lower end systems right now, I, I am not going to recommend the upgraded. Anything under, say, 500 megahertz, I'd say hold off. Get, get a new system before you actually upgrade it. You're going to need more RAM. You're going to need a larger hard drive. This is a big operating system. So with people with Windows 98 and lower systems, maybe just wait for a new PC before they take the plunge in XP? Maybe. It really depends on how much you spend initially on that box. If it, like we said, if it's under that, you want to you hold off for a little bit. In terms of like things like driver support, though, you've got one disk now that contains drivers for literally every piece of hardware that we've tested. I mean, there are a couple of exceptions, namely uh, some integrated chipsets and things like that. But in general, you have one disk now, one solid operating system that's arguably the most stable ever. And having all the drivers in one place is just something I, I am fully for. Okay, James Kim, you are the multimedia guy. Audio, video, right. what about XP? Uh, XP is a multimedia powerhouse, and they need to be because this is a modern operating system. You know, computing has gone past word processing. It's, you know, you've got Windows Media Player 8, which is a very, very good jukebox player. Um, it's, it's rooted, it's a default player here. That's very important because you know, competitors like Real and mm -hmm. QuickTime, they just really probably won't have a chance. Another thing is the, the messenger service. Uh, you know, it's, sort of, uh, it's sort of like the net meeting. It's on steroids. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very robust, great video conferencing uh, abilities, chat, chat abilities. Right. And you know, a lot of other vendors might disagree with this, but it's a good thing that they left uh, put these elements into XP. Well, I'm sure a lot of vendors would disagree with right. you on that, considering that there's a lot of competitors out there that may do a better job. Right. But these things are free. A lot of people just think of them as part of the operating right. system, even though that might not be a complete definition of it. Um, so real quickly, uh, Windows Media Player, good or bad? Oh, I think it's great. You know, the okay. fact that you have to download plugins to play DVDs and MP3s and you have to pay for them, that's right. kind of a negative. But overall, you know, it's a good, good uh, player and you can always download okay, another Okay, Movie Maker, what about right. that? Movie Maker probably on the on the low end side. I probably wouldn't use it myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, connections to di to digital cameras and scanners a good thing. Oh, it's it's pretty flawless, and uh, and I forgot to mention FireWire con connectivity. Uh, right. You can network your computers with uh, your XP boxes okay. with FireWire. Okay, Robert. So Robert, what about uh, drivers uh, compatibility? Good. Excellent, in my mind. It has everything on there. I don't need my floppy drive anymore, essentially, when I need updates for drivers or with a new piece of hardware I just bought. The other thing I really liked was oh, actually, one of the things I really didn't like was the fact that you're not given as much control as you used to have over the installation process now. You're given a set of applications that are really hard to remove if you want to get rid of something. Definitely. Namely, Windows Messenger. Right. Was, you cannot remove that, period. Okay, CDR writing, is that a good thing? That's awesome. That okay. should have been there all along. You should be able to put a blank disk in your system and at least drag and drop a file to it and record. That's a must-have feature. So definitely good, good marks from our lab, uh, lab staff. Um, no 16-bit uh, code, which is a good thing. No 95 uh, underpinnings, which were never a good thing, I don't think. Uh, so this is a good operating system. In the future, we really think this is going to have a major impact on the market. Maybe it's going to be three or four months, but it's a good operating system. We recommend it. Erica? Thank you, gentlemen. We hope you've enjoyed Beyond the Desktop Windows XP. You'll find continuing coverage of XP from comprehensive product reviews to breaking news at our website, techtv.com. Thanks for joining us. For all of us here at Tech TV, I'm Erica Hill.